News 96.5 is WDVO-FM Orlando. Powered by New South Window Solutions. The power, the torque, the ride. Experience the all-new 2017 Harley-Davidson's. They're not like anything else. Take a test ride today and let the ride decide. Orlando Harley's Hogtoberfest kicks off Friday, October 14th. Three days of death-defying stunts by the Ives Brothers Wall of Death and the Captain and Maybell. Rockin' live music and motorcycle vendors. Plus, your chance to win tickets to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Orlando Resort. Only at Orlando Harley-Davidson. OrlandoHarley.com. Hurricane Matthew, you're hearing this tone because we've activated the News 96.5 Storm Center every 15 minutes. Team coverage and its location, track, and how long it'll impact Central Florida. Stay connected to Orlando's Severe Weather Station everywhere you go with the News 96.5 WDBO app. County Road 44, just west of the land, is completely blocked due to a very large fallen tree impassable at this time. Hi, this is Chuck from Titusville. I gotta tell you, we just missed the eye even though the edge was over the cape, but it was like looking into the gates to hell. Mm. Uh, a very, very serious situation over there, Chuck, in, in Brevard County and Volusia County as well, and we thank you for sending in that open mic. Tell us what you're experiencing in your neighborhood using the open mic feature uh, on the News 96.5 WDBO app. I am Scott Inez, continuing uh, coverage of uh, Hurricane Matthew here on News 96.5 WDBO. We're going to go to Gene Wexler and the news coming out. Uh, right now, let's, let's take more phone calls, and by the way, uh, throughout the afternoon, we are going to be here taking your phone calls. We want to know what you're thinking, what you're seeing at this particular point. 844-220-0965. Let's go to Edgewater and chat with Nancy. Nancy, thank you for holding. You're up next. Go ahead, Nancy. Um, yes, I'm in the Florida Shores Division, and right now we have at least five trees down in our yard. Lost tower last night at 10.03. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's, that's bad. Uh, yeah, that, that's a big time inconvenience, isn't it, Nancy? It, it, it really is. Anytime you lose power, I mean, I I, I know. Uh, I just spoke with my wife. Actually, texted with my wife, and um, she says the power has been out for several hours now, and and the fence we have along the side of our house is kind of swaying back and forth. But it is. I mean, I can remember back in uh, in two thousand and four with those three hurricanes. We lost power in two of those three hurricanes, and it, it's just. A big old inconvenience, and the longer it goes on, it turns from inconvenience into a major pain in the you-know-what. So hopefully that power will be restored here very shortly. I am Scott Inez. You are listening to Continuous Coverage, Hurricane Matthew, here on News 96.5 WDBO. This is News 96.5 WDBO. Orlando turns first for breaking news, weather, and traffic 24 hours a day. Live team coverage starts now. Good afternoon. It is 12.01, and welcome to a special edition of Orlando's News at Noon. I'm Gene Wexler. We're still bringing you Storm Center coverage of Hurricane Matthew. We are not in the clear just yet. You've heard our, our host, Scott Inez, talking all morning. Many of you are, have been telling us how you appreciate our constant coverage, and we're going to keep going with it to keep you as informed as possible. Uh, this just in 10 minutes ago to our newsroom. Room. A tropical storm warning is now in effect for Orange and Seminole counties. That goes until 8.15 tonight. That was downgraded from a hurricane warning, but it's still serious. It means we could still see winds 25 to 35 miles per hour and gusts to 50 miles per hour. By the way, when you hear that tone for our new listeners out there, it means we're in storm center coverage and we either have severe weather coming to the area or it's in the area. Now, you heard it live on our airwaves uh, a little over an hour ago. He's calling it a dangerous storm still. The president, President Obama, says Hurricane Matthew is a continuing threat. The potential for storm surge, flooding, loss of life, and severe property damage continues to exist, and people continue to need to follow uh, the instructions of their local officials. He says he was briefed by FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security earlier today. By the way, as of this morning, Matthew was downgraded to a tropi- or a Category 3 hurricane, I should say. And right now, the eye wall I'm seeing live on my screen right here on the dot where it's about 30 miles uh, east of, it looks like, Palm Coast now. So it's gotten up a little bit further of Daytona Beach, and the eye wall is still out to sea, which we like. And it's still forecast to stay out to sea. And again, right now, 
now is near Palm Coast, heading up to Jacksonville. And the governor says the worst part of the storm is now on its way to Jacksonville. I'm really concerned about Jacksonville, and I'm really concerned about Nassau because... You know, over 10 foot of storm surge on top of that, the waves. And if you look at it, that's a lot. That's a very low line area. When he says Nassau, he's referring to Nassau County, which has Yulee and Fernandina Beach. Governor Scott particularly worried. He says he hopes everyone uh, that was supposed to evacuated did. Across the state as of this morning, he said 22,000 people were in shelters. The sheriff of Jacksonville telling everyone to get comfy right now as the weather picks up. Movement right now is incredibly dangerous. Getting out on the roads and under tropical storm conditions uh, is not advisable. So we're going to be joined by a reporter in Jacksonville about a half hour for a live update. I'm already hearing from him that the weather is starting to pick up there. Little over 120,000 customers of Florida and Power and Light without electricity in Volusia County. Repair crews are standing by to go to work. The storm's continuing to move through. So our crews, as soon as it's safe, as long as soon as and as long as it's safe for our crews to be out, they will be out working around the clock to restore power. FPNL Sarah Gatwood tells me they'll also be able to make a damage assessment at that time, and they prioritize repairs. We work with counties and communities first to bring back some of those critical community facilities, hospitals, police stations, um, fire stations, 911 centers so that they can get up and running and, and back to helping the communities as well. And with the storm damage in South Florida not as severe, they can bring more repairmen to Central Florida to restore the lights. Joe Rubel, News 96.5 WDBO. So our phone lines are open, by the way. 844-220-0965. I'm reminding you of this because a lot of you have been calling in telling us about price gouging. It's been a problem all week, apparently, and we heard a number of the sheriffs around town actually talking about that over the last few days. I read the Seminole County Sheriff said they were going to go after people. So Florida's Attorney General out this morning with a warning for any business trying to do that. We're out there, and if you're doing it, we're going to stop you. That's Pam Bonney telling Fox News that her office has investigators monitoring businesses 24-7 to make sure that hurricane victims don't fall prey to price hikes. She says she's seen instances of price gouging already. Their rate should have been $55. People drove from the East Coast to the West Coast to be safe, and they get there, and a hotel that they thought they were paying $55 for was almost $200 a night. Yeah, this woman actually had to move out of her room at a Days Inn in Tampa because the price jumped nearly 200%. They're just taking advantage of us. They're taking advantage of making money, extra money, because there's a hurricane coming. Let us know if that's going around, on around here. You can text us at 21232. And, of course, you can call us. Our phone lines are open, 844-220-0965. We're going to continue with our Storm Center coverage. We're hearing live from meteorologists. we got a reporter live in Jacksonville coming up. Our uh, host, Scott Inez, is going to keep going with this hour. Right now, it's 12.06 at News 96.5 WDBO. Guys, got that line around the top of your head? You know, that crease you get from wearing a hat all the time to hide your thinning hair? Well, I tossed my hat after Dr. Bass's team in Orlando. OrlandoHairD.com made my thinning hair thicker and healthier with the Neograft procedure. I got back the hair I used to have without a scalpel or a scar. And Kyle, it's amazing how good your hair looks after the Neograft procedure at OrlandoHairMD.com. Yeah. I know they have the artist robotic system there, too. That makes it the only clinic here in Orlando to have both the Neograft and artist technologies. And Scott, big news. Dr. Bassett has just added PRP, a new non-surgical option for even more choice for getting back the hair you used to have. Guys, check out my butchers at OrlandoHairMD.com. Then call 855-234-HAIR to get up to $1,000 off. That's 855-234-HAIR or OrlandoHairMD.com. Call 855-234-HAIR right now to get up to $1,000 off. Shouldn't you be seen 2020? Autumn is upon us, so it's time to fall into savings at 2020 Eyeglass Superstores. We're the home of the buy one, get one free offer and the best customer service in the business. And right now, you can get two pairs of glasses for as little as $105. Let me repeat that so you know you heard it right. Two pairs of glasses for as little as $105. And, wait for it, we even pay for your eye exam. With our own labs right in the stores, most glasses can be ready in an hour or two. Oh, and if you're planning to be at Biketoberfest, be sure to see 2020 Select 
collection of high-tech sports glasses with wraparound protection from the wind and sun for riding, running, golfing, boating, you name it. Made with space-age materials to stand up to the roughest wear and tear. In Orange City, we're just off I-4, exit 111B, right next to Ruby Tuesday. And at 1555 State Road 436 in Winter Park, the northwest corner of 436 and Howe Branch Road. Stop by 2020 Eyeglass Superstore today. Do you have acne or even the occasional breakout? With Prescription Grade Proactive Plus, your acne can heal and you can prevent future breakouts. Try Proactive Plus 100% risk-free. Plus, get two free gifts and free shipping. Take it from me, Proactive really works. Get Prescription Grade Proactive Plus, their amazing skin purifying mask, and a second gift of your choice. Totally free and free shipping. You're guaranteed to get clear and stay clear or you don't pay a penny. Call now, 800-281-8770. 800-281-8770. Only 12 drivers are safely into the next round in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Martin Trex Jr. Harvick will win at the Magic Mile. As the field narrows, they must keep chasing in hopes of making it to Miami. The run to the championship from here. Do it. NASCAR's best will be under the lights and under pressure. Trouble out of turn four. As they battle for the checkers in Charlotte. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues tomorrow in primetime on NBC. So what does it feel like to get the greatest haircut on earth at Lady Jane's in Altamont Springs? What does a soothing shampoo, scalp massage, and a hot lather neck shave feel like? Well, you know when the stud running back on your fantasy team tweaks his knee and all you have left is that third stringer? Then out of nowhere, he goes off for 200 yards and three scores? That's what it feels like to get the greatest haircut on earth at Lady Jane's in Altamont Springs on State Road 434 right next to Outback. Lady Jane's haircuts for men, it's wicked awesome. What an exciting time for you to take a test drive of a brand new Mercedes-Benz from Mercedes-Benz of Orlando. Right now, during the Drive Pink for Charity event, anytime you take a test drive, you'll not only drive an amazing car, but while supplies last, you'll get an AutoNation Pink Plate Plus, two tickets for the 2016 AutoNation Cure Bowl, December 17th. Go to Mercedes-Benz of Orlando in Maitland, 810 North Orlando Avenue, just a mile south of the Maitland Interchange. Gotta hurry, offer ends October 16th. Hey, it's Sean Hannity, and you are listening to News 96.5 WDBO, where Orlando turns for breaking news, weather, and traffic 24 hours a day. We have a curfew until 7 o'clock a.m. Saturday morning. Please don't head out and about this afternoon. We're going to continue to see heavy rain bands circulating around Hurricane Matthew throughout our afternoon and early evening, and we'll be looking at gusty winds. So no reason for you to be out and about. As we head into tonight, post 6 p.m., we'll start to dry things out. Our northern counties post 10 p.m., a better Saturday on the way. I'm Channel 9 meteorologist Marina Jureka. Now, safe touch security, triple team traffic. I-4 is free and clear right now, but you should stay off it. We still have a number of curfews out for several counties in the area. 1792 South of Airport Boulevard in Sanford. Power lines across the roadway. You will not be able to cross 1792 there. Also, we had a lot of flooding in Sanford, so be very careful crossing the roads. I-4 Ultimate has canceled construction. Uh, until further notice, they will let you know when that opens back up. And all causeways into Brevard County remain closed. They're going to do bridge inspections about 1.30 today. This report is brought to you by the Exergen Temporal Scanner Thermometer. Changes in weather can lead to colds and other ailments. Rely on the most accurate, easiest to use thermometer, the Exogen Temporal Scanner. Exogen is available at your local club warehouse and other fine retailers. With 24-hour traffic and storm center updates for Hurricane Matthew around the clock, I'm Jackie O'Brien, News 96.5 WDBO. We're here when you need us. Starting every day with the latest breaking news, plus weather and traffic every six minutes on Orlando's Morning News with Joe Kelly and around-the-clock Hurricane Matthew coverage. This is where Orlando turns first for severe weather. News 96.5 WDBO. Yeah, this is Harry from St. Cloud, uh, 1130-ish. Uh, no rain, no damage in Pine Lake Estates that I can see. And uh, very light rain, uh, moderate wind. Rode the storm out in Melbourne with family. Driving back to Orlando now. A lot of lights out on US-1. Dangerous intersections. Keep your eyes open. Pay attention to the police. Be safe. 
And yes, absolutely be safe. Those are words of wisdom, and we want you to use that open mic feature on the News 96.5 WDBO app. Keep sending those open mics in. We welcome you back. I am Scott Inez. It is 12-12 here on News 96.5 WDBO. It's our continuous coverage. Hurricane Matthew here on News 96.5 WDBO. We want to stay connected with you. Okay, so we're going to weave in and out of press conferences all over the state. We're going to weave in and out of uh, our, our chats with meteorologists, but you are our eyes and ears right now. So we want uh, you to, to call in and let us know what you're seeing, what you're thinking, uh, what your concerns are, what your questions are, 844-220-0965. Again, 844-220-0965. Hurricane warning now canceled for Seminole, Orange, and Osceola. Again, hurricane warning canceled for Seminole County, Orange County, and Osceola County. There is, however, still a tropical storm warning in effect in those counties, Seminole, Orange, and Osceola. Keep in mind that the curfews in Seminole and Orange are still in effect uh, until tomorrow morning. So uh, if, if you're not in some sort of official capacity, work-related capacity, uh, please don't get out on the roadways Okay, I I know it's tempting at times. We're still going through these outer bands here uh, in the inland counties. Uh, At at times, it may seem very calm, very peaceful out there. But know that that, uh, we're still going to get these outer bands throughout the afternoon. So you might be feeling good. Um, but but know that, that you still need to be cautious now in Volusia and especially northern Brevard. Um, you're still getting hammered by Hurricane Matthew, and it's going to be a while before you are in the clear, probably until 9, 10 o'clock tonight. So uh, everybody still, we can't stress this enough, remain very, very cautious as to what is going on out there. So we want you to be part of our Storm Center coverage here on News 96.5 WDBO 844-220-0965. Let's go to Joe over in St. Cloud. Joe, you're up next here on News 96.5 WDBO. Hi, Joe. Hi, Scott. Uh, Thank you so much for the work that you're doing and the wonderful work that WDBO has been doing. A longtime resident of Central Florida, over 43 years. You guys have been around and have stuck up as the news leaders. Uh, You have not said anything that needed to be said, that don't need it to be said regarding the weather. Mm. If you had not been warning the people, it could have been way, way worse. I have been here for over eight hurricanes, uh, maximum ones. And we could have really had a bad, thank God. And uh, I'd like to thank you guys for preparing us. I also would like to thank the Osceola County um, government, uh, the Road and Bridge people. They have been working ahead of time um, this past year, clearing out uh, lines and everything and clearing out the ditches. And they have done a wonderful work. If we would have gotten worse weather, I think we would have survived in a better way. Uh, please continue your job. Forget about all these naysayers that don't know what they're talking about and saying that you're exaggerating. <laughs> you're saying very much exactly the way it is. Well, Joe, thank, so thank you. you for your work. Thank you thank for you your for listening. the work of all the public servants that uh, do carry out their jobs properly and dutifully look ahead of time for this kind of situation. Joe, thank you very, very much for your comments. We certainly do appreciate it. And and look, it's not an overwhelming amount of comments that we're getting, but um, inevitably you're, you're, you're going to get that in this business. You guys just overhype this, especially here inland and in Orange and Seminole and, and Osceola counties. But look, Matthew jogged, you know, 10 to 20 miles eastward overnight, and that was huge folks huge in terms of of effect that this monster has had on us with that said the coast northern bavard volusia still getting hammered okay and and storm surge um not as as bad as we expected but but still that storm surge flooding that that's going to be of a primary concern here and for those of you who did text that stuff in about us overhyping it just wait till those pictures come in later on today 
over the weekend, and and you'll rethink that position. We'll go back to the phone lines here in a moment. I want to check in with Severe Weather Center 9 meteorologist Marina Jerico, who has been doing just a great job for us over the last few days, explaining what's happening, what's going to happen. Uh, Marina, thank you for your hard work. We certainly do appreciate it. You're, you're <laughs> watching Matthew right now. What's he doing, Marina? Um, Matthew is uh, just shifting a little bit to the north of Daytona Beach as it makes its way towards Palm Coast and then eventually St. Augustine and I actually was just on the why I missed uh, the hit with you guys just mm-hmm. a few minutes ago is because I was on with WKRO which is our sister station in Daytona Beach yeah. and their radio station is in Daytona and literally all the front windows blew in and they said they were like daggers the glass Wow! and it just scared them so much because they were just on the other side of that glass and so they actually had to go and move to a different uh, set in the back mm. and they just said it's just Marina when you said that the glass is like daggers you weren't kidding and they wow. saw 107 mile per hour winds right there at their station and so that's what's happening in Volusia County right now so I was listening to that gentleman and thank you so much you know for calling in and saying you know this isn't hype this isn't hype you know we can only prognosticate where that storm is headed with material that we have at that time we were extraordinarily lucky that this storm moved 15 to 20 miles east for our inland counties that has nothing to do with the devastating effect that Matthew has had on both Brevard and Volusia County and we're going to see we're just slowly starting to now see these pictures trickle in and it is devastating and so just think about the fact that you are extraordinarily lucky and that there's a lot of people in our viewing area who are not as lucky yeah i mean we we've heard stories from our callers from over in brevard and volusia mm-hmm. saying boat decks have just totally d- disintegrated and and, oh, yeah. and roofs from houses just blowing off so um and, and again we, we're going to see those pictures here very very shortly and you feel for those people who have been affected now for for us uh, who are inland now in, in in orange and in seminole and osceola what can we expect here give us a timeline of what can we expect here in the next several hours so we'll continue to see bands of heavy rain in bands i mean that it's going to come in waves so it's not going to be consistent or persistent but it's going to be bands of heavy rain and then we'll be looking at wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour and that is until five o'clock tonight Then as we move further towards the north, so we're talking portions of northern Seminole, moving into Volusia and Flagler County, we'll be looking at showers and uh, some heavier parts of the storm until about 10 o'clock tonight. Now, the the actual heaviest of the storm in Volusia County is about to leave there in about an hour, Mm. and then it'll push into Flagler County, and then we're just going to be looking at the same thing that uh, downtown Orlando is seeing now, just these waves. But I'm telling you, 107 to 114 mile per hour wind are being loaded from uh, Volusia County over the last 20 minutes, so it has been quite scary there. Category 3 hurricane, it is no joke. Where is he headed now? I know St. Augustine in his path, mm-hmm. Jacksonville and, and Georgia, South Carolina, even North Carolina, yeah. Marina. Yeah, South Carolina, North Carolina, it actually might make landfall in South Carolina. We'll have to see as it clips. But what's happening is it's actually going to come in contact with an area of high pressure that's to the north of the Carolinas. So that's going to cause Matthew to stay south and actually push east. And then it's going to start to veer around. And then as it does that, it's going to hit a tropical storm, Nicole. And then as it hits Nicole, that'll make it veer west back towards Florida. But it's going to really start to break apart because uh, it is churn the ocean up now because it's been here and it's just that cold water that's on top and that's not conducive to hurricane formation so we're going to be looking at it probably being a depression by thursday or friday of next week as it starts to come closer to the florida coastline hoping that it just falls apart completely at that point but uh, we could be tracking a tropical depression matthew as it gets a little closer to the end of the week i think i speak for all of us here at news 96.5 wdbo when i say we love you marina but not <laughs> no. that much like we don't no. want to go through this again next no, week okay no i right. don't want to either let's just keep him far far away <laughs> right, i am i am i'm a voter of that as well <laughs> yeah, amen all right we'll talk to you here in a few minutes thank you so much severe Thanks. weather center nine meteorologist marina jurica i am scott Inez. we are taking your phone calls and here is the phone number 844-220-0964 and after